Greetings, Ian from RTO here. Hope you're all well on this Wednesday. Welcome to another marathon and big catalogues. And today is a viewer's request, and it's one I've held back on on purpose because we talk about Simple Minds, of course, and their new album came out last week, so I wanted to include that. So I've done some really OTT listen of the album, but it's given me a rough idea. So Simple Minds were formed in 1977. They're a sort of a they came out of a band called Johnny and the Self Abusers. It didn't last very long, um, but some of the people that were in that band, like I, Jim Kerr, Charlie Burchill, Burchill, and Ron McGee, went on to form their own band, and they called it Simple Minds. Um, there's a one period that I really like of Simple Minds and that is my favourite um, I do like some of their earlier albums but their later ones I'm not the greatest fan and I hadn't listened to anything past 1995 until I ranked these so it was a bit of an eye opener and I can understand why I went off them so we've got 20 albums to look at today, um, so we'll get a crack in. So coming in at number 20, it's from 2001 and it's called Neon Lights and it's a cover album of other people's stuff. So we've got Jim Kerr on the vocals, Charlie Burchill on guitars, um, Gordy, Gordy Goody on guitars and keyboards, we've got additional vocals from D Miller. And Kevin Burley as well. So here we go. First track is a really shocking version of Gloria by Van Morrison. Don't like it at all. The Man Who Sold the World, a classic from David Bowie, ruined by Simple Minds. Homo Sapien. This is a Pete Shelley song. Uh, it's not a bad version. It's Pete Shelley is much better, of course. Then we get a listenable version of Patti Smith's band's Dancing Barefoot. An absolute naff version of Carafe Works Neon Lights. Totally ruined it. And then they go and do the Hainal Cardinal Sing. They cover a door song, Hello I Love You and Mother It. They didn't do a bad version of the Echo and the Bunnymen's Bring, in, bring On the Dancing Horses. But they did a very bad version of Neil Young's The Needle and The Damage Done. Yes, The Damage You've Done was ruined the song. Um, but they did a really good version of For Your Pleasure by Roxy Music. Quite like that. Um, and then they did a little bit better version of All Tomorrow's Parties by The Velvet Underground. And then they did a terrible version of Human Leagues being boiled. Stop it. Um, and then they end up doing a version of Love Will Tear Us Apart by the Joy Division and totally ruined it. Terrible album. The covers are just terrible. I've never heard such bad versions of songs. But the ones that the two or three that got right are okay. So I'm gonna give this an RTO ranking of two out of ten. Okay then coming in at number nineteen, um got a two thousand sixteen now for the seventeenth album studio album called Acoustic and yes it's acoustic studio recordings of songs and of their own so we've got Jim Kerr on vocals Charlie Burchill on guitars and accordion and a programming Ged Grimes on the bass Gordy Goody guitars harmonicas Sarah Brown on backing vocals Sharice O.C. on percussion and a guest appearance by Katie Tunstall on Promised You a Miracle. She plays guitar and bass. First track they have a cracker acoustically is The American. It's alright. That's what I'll say about that. Promised You a Miracle. Uh, the highlight of this is the backing vocal from Katie, Katie Tunstall. About that, it's just lacking everything. Glittering prize, it just doesn't work as an acoustic track. See the lights, probably the best version of the song on it. I don't mind that. New Gold Dream just didn't work. 
Someone Somewhere in the Summertime, certainly one of the better songs. Waterfront just doesn't sound right. Terrible. Sancti Sop for yourself. Chelsea Girl. Doesn't work. Alive and Kicking. Doesn't work. Don't you forget about me. It's okay. But it doesn't work. And Long Black Train. I've never heard that track. And, uh, it's alright. Again, it's a little bit hit and miss. I'm not a great lover of acoustic albums. Sometimes bands really hit the nail on the head, but these didn't. But for the ones I did like, I'll give it an RTO ranking of 4 out of 10. Now, coming in at number 18 is a song. Now, this is a box set. And on that box set was... A the 12th studio album of original material. Uh, this is from 2004 and the box is called Silver Box 5D. This is Silver Box. And the album Secrets of the Same was done around between 1999 2000. Uh, so we've got Jim Kerr on vocals, Charlie Birchill on guitars, Kevin Hunter on guitars, guitars Eddie Duffy on the bass. Mark Kerr on the drums and Chris Fudrick on additional keyboards. First track on this one is called Swimming Towards the Sun. It's weird. It's got a good bass line, but it's pretty dull on the whole. Jeweler to the Stars. I quite like this one. I like um, Charlie's guitar work on it. Pretty good. Space is heavily relied on a drum machine and it just doesn't sound right. Death by Chocolate. What were they thinking? It's just horrible tinny production. Drum machines just don't sound wrong. Waiting for the End of the World. I don't have a problem with this one. It's a bit weird, but uh, it's listenable. Neon Carl Cowboys. It's alright, not much structure to it. And it's a bit dull in places. It goes on a little bit. It's 3.52 and I think it's about two minutes too long. She knows. I like the song but the drumming just sounds plastic. It's a shame because it's quite a nice song. Hello. Another song that's all over the place. Not for me. Happy is the man. Could have been a good song. But again the production and the drums just spoil it. Sleeping. Worst track on the album, the drum machines sound terrible. I can see why Simple Minds delayed this and just threw it on a box set. Um, it's a bit of a mixed bag. It's some, those are reasonable songs, but some of the production on that album is pretty mediocre. So I'm going to give that one an RTO ranking of 4.5. Okay, coming in at number 17, we've got the 16th album released in 2014 on the 31st of October. And it's called a Big Music. So it's Jim Kerr on the vocals as ever. Charlie Burchill on guitars. Mel Gainers on drums. Andy Gillespie keyboards. Ged Grimes bass guitar. Blindfolded. This has got lots of elements of the old style Simple Minds on this. Uh, it's not a bad track. I don't mind that one. Midnight Walking. Again we've got elements of classic sounding Simple Minds. But the drums just don't sound right. Honest Town, I like this track. I do. Uh, the drums are okay, but it's sort of... You can tell it's Simple Minds, that's all I'll say. The guitar work from Virgil is fantastic. Big Music, the title track. It's alright. Just pleasant enough, I suppose. Human, uh, this is a song that the band has really lost its direction. It started doing dance sounds and I don't know think what they were doing blood diamonds it's got elements of classic sound in simple minds but they're throwing in that dance beat and that just ruins it let the day begin catchy keyboard runs in this it's reasonable and I'll do like Charlie's guitar bits 
Then we've got Concrete and Cherry Blossom. Great vocal from Jim on this. But that's the only thing I can say about it. Um, Imagination. This is so dancey. I hate that drum and bass bass with drum. It's it's so it's horrible, and that's what all that is. Kill or cure. So repetitive. So plastic. Broken glass park. There's no drummer on this. It's just horrible drum programming. Spirited away is just monotonous and horrible. I can't listen to it. I think I started listening to it and thought oh, I've got to switch this off. I think this is a band that have lost direction by now. Uh, they've still got that um, elements of the classic sound but the, what really really put me off this album is putting the dance mach drum machine sound on it. What were they thinking? But hey ho. But for the tracks they really did work on, I'll give this an RTO ranking of 5 out of 10. Okay then, coming in at number 16. Now this is where it gets a little confusing, because you'll say, well you've said the 11th album. Well you're going to say the 11th album, but this is the 11th album of original music, released in 1998, and it's Neopolis. It's Jim Kerr and Charlie Burchill as ever. Derek Forbes is on this one. Return of Derek Forbes on the bass. Mel Gainer on the drums, one of them, and then you've got a hat full of drummers and programmers of the Dukes do the strings. Yes. First song on this one is called Song for the Tribes. This could have been a really good track, but instead of using a drummer, they used the machine and they didn't program it right in my eyes. Very bad drumming. On a reasonably good track. Get Glitter Ball, certainly not a rock and pop track. This is just dance. What were they thinking? War Babies. Now, this is allegedly got uh, Mel Gainer on it, but I didn't really hear it because the sound, it just sounds like a t drum machine. Not very good at all. Tears of a Guy. This isn't too bad. I like the riff in this from Charlie. So, okay, Superman vs. Super Sold. The percussion again just ruins it. Just use drummers. Then we get the best track on this one. It's called Lightning. It's got a catchy beat to it and some nice, but it's a pretty good vocal from Jim. If I Had Wings, another one of the better songs on this. It's, I don't mind that one. Killing Andy Warhol. Very same as after the other tracks. Same beat, same edit, and just different words. And Andronomy, again, a tinny drum machine. Nothing going on with that one. Um, another an album that I wasn't overly impressed with. There are one or two good tracks on here, but they all sound the same. Once you put a drum machine on albums like this, the beat just sounds the same. And it's a shame, because some of the tracks were pretty good even with the drum machine take away the drum machine put a drummer on it give it a bit of individuality and it probably have worked but apart from that um, I was not impressed so I'm going to give this an RTO ranking of oh, just lost my price 5.5 okay then coming in at number three Fifteen, we have the thirteenth album of original material, Cry, released in two thousand and two. Um, we've got Jim Kerr on here as usual, Charlie's on here as usual, and they were the only bands because the additional magicians, magicians, magicians I keep saying magicians, additional musicians, are Gordy Gordy Goody, E Pat Lego, keyboards and guitars, Dino Maragnia on keyboards. Planet Funk, who the hell that is. Mark Kerr, uh, acoustic guitar, and Daniel Tinjo on additional vocals. First track is the title track, Cry. Starts well, I thought, oh, here we go. And then they put the horrible plastic drum on it. Oh, I didn't like it, and then onwards. Space Face. Sounds like some of their earlier stuff. It's pretty good, I don't mind that. New Sunshine Morning. When they do things 
simple. Guitars, drums, bass, keyboards, great vocal from Jim. It works, and it's a really good track. I like that one. One step closer. Start putting all the fancy stuff on it, and it just ruins it. Simple as. Face the Sun. It's okay. One of the better tracks. Disconnected. It is disconnected. It's more of a song that belongs on a dance album. Nothing to do with rock and roll and rock. It's a terrible track. Lazy Lately. What was that thing about programming stuff? Use a drummer. I don't like it. Sugar. I don't mind this one. It's got a bit of beef into it. There's some drums. They're a bit plastic, but the riffs are pretty cool in that one. Sleeping Girl. More drum and bass. Forget that. Cry Again. I just wanted this to fish and finish because it just doesn't sound right. Slave Nation. Another track that could have been good, except for the drum machines. And then to top it off, they bring Vince Clark in. And it becomes this plinky plonky dance track. Terrible track. Mixed bag here. What were they thinking going into dance music? Doesn't suit them. But the the rock the rock sort of sound that they've had were good, so that's an RTO ranking of five point eight. Okay then coming at number fourteen, we're going to 2018 now for the eighteenth album Walk Between Worlds. As ever present on here is Jim Kerr and Charlie Burchill. Ged Grimes is on the bass. Mel Gaynor does some drumming on here. And then there's a hatful of drummers and enough people to make an army, to make an album. Um, first track on here is Magic. Now this is one of the catchy tunes on this and it, I don't mind it. Pretty good. Summer, love the bass line on this. Pretty Pretty good, but the rest of the song is pretty mediocre. Um, Utopia, this is all about drum program, and I didn't want to listen to it. 30 seconds in, I thought, right, that's rubbish. Switched off. The Signal and the Noise, one of the better tracks. Um, from, it's a good vocal from Jim, actually. Um, in Dreams, this had a real potential. It started well nice melody and then in comes that horrible drum beat and it just I switched off Barrel and Star the best song on here great drumming great melody great vocal do the simple things right and you've got a good song like that one then we get Walk Between Worlds it's got a bit of a Celtic feel to it, so we're going back to their Celtic sound, and I don't mind that track. Sense of Discovery. Again, it's it's got the vibes of a live and kicking style track. Good way to end the album. Uh, this is a mixed bag. They get the when they get it right and keep it simple, they're really good. And when they go and do all technico and all that rubbish, it just doesn't work. It really doesn't work. So I'm going to give this one an RTO ranking at 6 out of 10. Okay, number 13. It's the new album. That was released on the 21st of October 2022. And it's called The Direction of the Heart. It's it's their 19th full out uh, of original music. Although there's, we're doing 20, this is... I think it's that box set that threw it out as well. But this is the 19th official of album. We've got Jim Kerr on it, of course. Charlie Burchill. Ged Grimes on bass. Therese O.C. on the drums. Sarah Brown and backing vocals. First track on here is called Vision Thing. Uh, it starts promising. It's got some nice keyboards. And it's really going back to the old style of Simple Minds. Don't mind that at all. First, you jump. And then we go back to this mediocre sound. Sounds very plastic and ordinary. Human traffic. My concerns is that 
Jim Kerr's voice is sort of going flat uh, and I'm not having to dig at him I don't have a dig at because he has a great voice but I think he struggled on that one he really did he couldn't hit the notes as well as he used to um, then we got Who Killed Truth I've got to give this band they're trying to recapture the, the original sound but they've just overproduced this which is a shame I think if you stripped it back a little bit more this track definitely had potential Saltis Solstice Kiss best track on the album they really did capture that classic sound um, it wasn't overly produced it is, they've got every other balance is right and it's a very good track I do like that but when they do um, Act of Love the next track it goes back to that overproduced poppy, so poppy sound I just didn't like it. Natural, again, Jim's sounds a little bit flat on here. These slower ones, he just seems a bit flat. And he just can't get the right tones. It's a shame. Planet Zero. Uh, again, I like this one. It's my second favourite track on the album. You can hear some really good guitar work here from Charlie. The walls come. The walls come. Came down. Sorry, uh, a little bit poppy for me. One of the weaker tracks. Direction of heart. The title track. It's okay. It's nothing special, but it's listenable. And then wonder times. Again, a track where they really tried to go back to the old style. There's some nice guitar work from Charlie. Okay, I think this this album. It's certainly. A lot better than the walk between worlds their previous album are they starting to try and get that original sound back I hope so um, there's not as much drum programming on this as the previous albums is it a classic no of course it's not um, but it's a better album and I'm hoping that they if they release any more that they sort of go back down back to roots back to the roots um, will it make my top 20 albums of the year probably not but it's an improvement on the last album so I'm gonna give this an RTO ranking of 6.5 okay then coming in at number 12 then we get to the third album uh, released in 1980 and it's Empires and Dance people say oh this is a bit low there is a reason so on here we've got Charlie Burchill on guitar and saxophone Derek Forbes on the bass Jim Kerr on vocals Mick McNeil and Brian McGee so you've got this sort of classic lineup. first track on this one is I Travel this is a track that just doesn't know what it wants to be. Do I want to be a pop song? Do I want to be a rock song? Or do I want to be a dance song at the time? This is 1980, remember. Bit confused track. And then we got Today I Died Again. And this one is going towards the rock sound that we would get used to. And I don't mind that one. Then we get Celebrate. Um, again, it's a bit different it's going more down the lines of Depeche Mode and I love the bass line from Derek on this it's pretty good this fear of gods experimentally it just, just doesn't know where it wants to go capital city again it's just very confusing what genre it fits into and Const Constantinople line it's very disjointed they're trying to bung all the different elements into one track and it just didn't work twist run repulsion again very mixed sound on that 30 frames a second it's totally disjointed and experimental Kant's Kino very short piece it's just under two minutes but it's quite nice and room I don't like that track again 
I think with this album, they sort of went after two good their first two albums of making progression. They went backwards a little bit with this one. And they went into a direction. I don't know if it was forced on them or not, but it just didn't come back to what they were doing. Uh, I mean, I do like um, "Today I Died Again." That's the sound on what I think they should have stuck with. And it's not because that's my favourite track on the album, but a little bit all over the place on this one. So I'm going to give this an RTO ranking of 6.6. .6. Okay then, coming in at number 11, we have Graffiti Soul, uh, the 15th album of original material, released in 2009. So we've got Jim Kerr on the vocals, Charlie Birchall on the guitars, Mel Gaynor still with them. We've got Eddie Duffy on the bass, and then a list of people as long as your arm helping out. Um, first track on this one is called Moscow Underground. I really like the bass line on this. This is more what I'm used to. Um, nice guitar work from Charlie. Pretty good track. Rockets. Uh, Charlie Birchall's guitar is really good in this. It's, that, it's a proper solid sound of Simple Minds. Pretty good. Then we get my favourite track on this one. Uh, Stars Will Lead the Way. It's that distinctive guitar sound that Charlie Birchall created. Great vocal from Jim as well. Light Travels is next. That's how they decided to use a program some drums and it just made it sound plastic and boring although the guitar work is pretty good Kiss and Fly it's just a very mediocre track um, Graffiti Soul I like this the guitar work is really good from Charlie good vocal from Jim Blood Typo They've just got the sound right on that one. It sounds like a good, solid track from Simple Minds. Then we got This Is It. This is more like it. This is proper sounding. Okay, this album isn't too bad. I was quite surprised with this. There's more guitar work on it than the previous albums. It's a half-decent album. One of the better ones in the late part of their catalogue. So I'm going to give this one an RTO ranking of 7 out of 10. Okay then, coming in at number 10, we have an album from 2005, and it's the 14th album of original material, and it is called Black and White 050505. Um, Jim Kerr's on this one, of course, and Charlie Burchill. Mel Gaynor's drumming. Um, Ed, Eddie Duffy's on the bass, and Andy Gillespie on the keyboards and then a low and then there's some additional guitar some jazz code backing vocals are done by daniel tingo john backendale and sean kelly guest vocals on too much television stay visible quite good love the bass line here from eddie it's proper simple minds bass uh drumming for mel's terrific very strong track home Well, the, the drumming, I don't know what they've done with his drumming on that, but it doesn't sound right. I love the guitar and the bass, though. Pretty good. Stranger, this is quite good. It's got a weird trumpety sound in it as well. Different World, another good track. Charlie's guitar work is very good. Some great keyboard from Andy Gillespie. Pretty good. Underneath the Ice, it's okay. The Jeweler. Oh, where I've lost, I've lost my place. Uh, well, can't believe I've done that. The jeweler part two. There we go. I like the drumming on this and the solid bass. Pretty good. A life shot in black and white. Oh, it's all right. That's all I'll say about that. Kiss the ground. Softer track. Some nice guitar work. Then my favourite track on here is the track Dolphins. Now I first heard this on one of these. I think it was in the one of the Sunday papers a live album and I thought it was pretty cool 
Uh, that's one of my later tr favourite tracks of the later periods. And then we get this bonus track. Um, too much television. Yeah. You can see why it's a bonus track. It's not very good. Um, I think this is one of their best albums from the 2000s, actually. Um, the early 2000s, anyway. I don't mind this album. I was quite surprised again. So I'm going to give this one an RTO ranking of 7.2. Okay, coming in number 9. we got another debut album now. From April 79. Life in a day. So we've got what I call the classic lineup of Simple Minds of Jim Kerr, Charles, who's now known as Charles Birchall at the beginning, Derek Forbes, Brian McGee, and Michael McNeil. Uh, first track is Someone. This has got certainly left over from their post punk days from that band they were in. Uh, it's got some great guitar in it, the keyboards are really freaky. It's a good track. Title track, Life in a Day, certainly got that new wave sound of keyboards. It's quite quirky. Like that track, Santa Fe. Or that post punk. Great uh, guitar work from Charlie. Like that one. All for you, strong riffs here. Real hard, gritty riffs. Certainly a track from the day with its new wave feel to it. Pleasantly disturbed, strange. Doesn't fit really on the album, but it's good. A good track. A bit of punk in there. A bit of new wave, but it's a great vocal from Jim. I like that. No cure. It's just a mixture of punk, post-punk, and it's got a feel of Virginia Plain by Roxy Music on it. Chelsea Girl. It's. I really like this track. It's one of my favourites of that of that period. Um, it hasn't really got an identity, um, but it's a good track. Wasteland, pretty solid track. Then we got Destiny, my favourite track on the album. Um, I've always liked this one. It's got that blondie feel to it, so I like that. And Murder Story reminds me of some of the Spark stuff. It's okay. Um, this is an interesting album. Remember, I did this in the Battle of the Day. It does lack a little bit of direction. The tracks are a little bit all over the place, but all the tracks are really good, even though they they try different things. Um, but it's a decent album, and I'm going to give this an RTO ranking of seven point three. Okay, then coming in at number eight, we've got the second album, and it's the second album they released in. 1979. This was released in the November, and it's called Real to Real Cacophony or something like that. Um, so it's Jim, Charles, Derek, Brian, and Michael. Real to Real is the top first track. Very electronic, new wave guitar sound. Really good. Um, Naked Eye is a little bit weird for me. Then we get Citizen, Dance of Youth. Very experimental. Nice and little um, sounds on it. But reasonably good. Then we get a track that I really do like. Uh, it's called Carnival Shelter in a Shoot Suitcase. The keyboard style on here reminds me so much of Dave Greenfield. Obviously of the Stranglers. It's got some good guitar work and it's, I really like this track. Probably my second favourite on the album. Factory, a uh, good track. Very Hazel O'Connor. But instead of Hazel singing, you get Jim. And I think it's a really good track. Then we get this short little thing called Caffoni. Uh, it's weird, but there's nothing wrong with it. Like a bit of weirdness now and again. The Velt is weird, but it's just too weird for me. It's just lots of noises. doesn't do nothing for me. Premonition. Solid enough track, it's listenable. Then we get my favourite track, um, it's called Challenging. This just shows where they were going to go, um, and I think that's why I like it. Very good. Film film theme, that's a bit troll. Calling Your Name, another good track, reminds me of some really early sort of post-punk sound, you know, like Ultra Box, pretty good. Scar, 
certainly a track of its time. You wouldn't record tracks like this now. It's very dated, but it's good for the time. I thought Simple Minds were going in the right direction with these two albums. Um, pretty weird. they they went backwards on the Empire album. I think they've gone more forwards and stuck with it. I think it would have worked for them. Uh, but uh, this is a really good album, and I'm going to give this one an RTO ranking of 7.5. Now, coming in at number 7, it's a double album with a different difference. There's two albums, but they've both got separate names. One being called Sons of Fascination, and the other being called Sister Feelings Call. Cool. Um, released in 1981, and it's their fourth album. And on here we've got Jim Kerr, Charlie Burchill, Mick McNeil, Derek Forbes and Brian McGee. And then we've got, we've got Ken Lockie doing backing vocals, Jackie backing vocals. So the first album, Sons and Fascinations, opens up with a track called In Trance As Mission. I like this song. I love that Derek Forbes bass line. I do like Derek Forbes bass when he was a Simple Minds. Really heavy. Good stuff. Um, sweat in a bullet again here comes Derek with a booming bass line followed by some great chunky guitar from Charlie great track 70 cities as L love brings the fall solid song you know some great vocals there from Jim boys in Brazil some great drumming from Brian on that it's that starting to establish that great sound of the drums with um, Simple Minds. Next song, classic love song. I love this tempo. Really good. Great vocal from Jim on that one. This Earth that you walk upon. One of the songs I'm not too keen on. It's a little bit weak for me. Sons and Fascination, solid track. Still developing that sound and it's really good. Seeing the Angel Out, it's okay. You know, they're just starting to do them that get that sound and making it sound good. Okay, the second album the set is called Sister Feelings Call. Opens up with one of my favourite tracks. Instrumentally sort of song. Themes for the great cities. Love the keyboards on this. Really is brilliant. Great track. Then we get the American, another one of my favourite tracks. Oh, no, early tracks. Love Jim's vocal on that one. Then we get a track called 20th Century Promised Land. I would say this is like the big brother of Promised You a Mir Miracle. I'm saying it like that because this came out obviously before that and it's on that sound sort of vein. Really good track. Wonderful in Young Life. Fantastic drumming from Brian on that. Careful in the career, not a particular favourite of mine. A bit wishy washy. Um, very interesting to release a double album and give it to each album a different name. But what they should have done was actually take the best songs from both albums, in all honesty. Because I don't think there's enough solid tracks on both albums um, for at this stage of their career. So I think. If you'd have taken things like Great City, The American, 20th Century, Promised Land from one album, Love Song, Boys in Brazil, Sweating a Bullet and In a Trance and a Mission, I think you'd have had an absolutely belter album. But on the whole, I do like this album, and I'm going to give it an RTO ranking of 7.7. .7. Okay, then, coming in at number 6, we've got 1989 now on the 8th album. And it is called Street Fighting Years, released in May of 1989. A change up of um, different bass player. We've got John Giblin in the band now, but it's still Jim, Charlie, Mick. Uh, the drumming's um, shared between Manu Kache and Mel Gaynor. First track, Street Fighting Years. Just one of the most boring starts to any record that I own. It's a boom, boom, uh. It does perk up, which is a good thing, really. Um, Soul Cry Now, 
It's very gentle. Some nice drumming here. And I think this is um, Manu Kache. Very good. Wall of Love. Again, it takes a little while to get going, but once it gets going, the guitar work from Charlie is pretty good. I like that. This is your land. It is such a dreary song. Don't like it at all. Sounds like everyone's bored and fed up. Um, take a step back. Love the drumming on this, and I think the drumming on this one is Mel's. That's uh, pretty good. I like that. Um, then we get Kick It In. One of these weird tra tracks that the guitar work, guitar keeps finding in and out. I think it works good and I do like that track. Then we get Let It All Come Down. Love the guitar work from Charlie on this. Very Celtic sounding like that track. Then we get Mandela Day. I don't like this. Never have. And then, of course, we get my favourite track ever by Simple Minds. Much to the disgust of two of my Irish friends. <laughs> Belfast Child. I love this. Okay, it's a Scottish band singing a song about Highland. I just love it because it's Celtic sounding and because I've got a great grandfather that was born in Belfast and I've got a great grandmother who was born in Aberdeen. So it's my um, Celtic roots and that's why I love it. I should have ended the album with this because the track they end the album with is absolutely awful. And it's a very, very bad version of Peter Gabriel's Beko. Jim, let Peter sing this. He was the only one that really could sing it. I don't like their version of it. At all. Uh, then we get... Uh, there's a little... Uh, in instrumental that's on the bonus and I haven't put it on this I can't remember the name of the track but there you go, it's up on the screen um, I like this little beast because it's uh, it's um, very Celtic I just thought of that because I've gone through the script and it's not on there, I know it's on my album so there we go uh, it's got some really good tracks on here some weaker ones. This is sort of the start of the decline. The start of the decline. It's still a reasonable album. So I'll give this an RTO ranking of 8 out of 10. Okay then, coming in at number 5. We get to the 10th album, released in 1995. Good news from the next world. Basically, this is just uh, Jim Kerr and Charlie Burchill. And then enough people to actually make a string quartet and a proper orchestra up of people playing drum, bass, vocals, guitars oh, it's too many to mention so the first track on this one is called She's a River this is a great track, I love this the bass line is terrific it's a simple, classic sounding Simple Minds great track Night Music, another good track Charlie's guitar work is great, great vocal from Jim Hypnotized. Now, this is the real start of the downward spiral for me. Uh, I don't like this track at all. Although, the guitar from Charlie is always good. Um, then we get my favourite track, Great Leap Forward. Classic track this is. Uh, I love the guitar riffs. Great drumming on this. Don't know who does the drumming on it because there's so many drummers on this. And it's Jim's best vocal on the album. Seven Deadly Sins. Solid track. Simple sort of sounding, uh, but solid, simple mind stuff. And the band played on. Again, this is a track where it started. It goes sort of a bit weird. And I thought, oh, don't like this. But it's got a good guitar solo on it, though. I'll give it that. My Life, another good track. Cratchy Hooks, great vocal from Jim. 
Criminal World. It's quite psychedelic. I like that. This time. It's a good track. Good guitar work from Charlie. To end the album. Um, to me, this is probably the last of the real great Simple Minds album. This is when I sort of switched off because I heard the next album. Well, I did buy it. But I sold it. Because <laughs> I didn't like it. Oh. I, had, I just got rid of it because it was terrible. It wasn't terrible. I just didn't like the direction that we're going in. But this one I do like. And I'm going to give it an RTO ranking of 8.4. Okay then. Coming at number 4. We'll go to the ninth album now. Released in 1991. And it was the first time without original band member Mick McNeil. And it's the real life album. So it's Jim. Charlie Mel. And then a list of people that just played on it uh, Malcolm Foster did the bass but everything else is just hundreds of people first track on here is one of my favourite tracks by um, Simple Minds and it's real life I love the lyric the lyric is brilliant uh, it's a great vocal from Jim I love the keyboards on this as well I don't know who just the keyboards on this it could be one of two people could be Peter John Pertes. I think it is because I think he was the guy that was playing on stage when I saw them on this tour. Uh, then we get the brilliant See the Lights, catchy tune, Why the Bells, great track. Let There Be Love, a fine opening riff from Charlie, and I love that song. Then we get Woman, uh, I'm not keen on this one, but the guitar. Sounds good. That's about it. Stand by love. Great guitar on this from Charlie, especially at the beginning. Um, get that lovely rhythm sound as well. Good track. Um, Let the children speak. It's one of the weaker tracks on the album. It's the drum beat that really puts me off. African skies is a little bit different. It's solid enough. Then we get banging on the door. Quite a good track. Love Charlie's guitar on that. Travelling Man, I think this is look, part two of the Waterfront. Really like that track. Rivers of Ice, very gentle track. Like the piano, it's very atmospheric and a great vocal from Jim. Uh, when the worlds, two worlds co collide, love the guitar work again from Charlie. It's moody and atmospheric. A very solid album. This is where the drum machine sort of started to creep in. A little bit more. Um, that's the only downside of this. But there's some great classic tracks on this. I saw them on this tour. And this album is all very special for me. So I'll give this one an RTO ranking of 8.5. Okay, these next three albums are the really the albums that I love. So coming in at number three, we get on the fifth album released in 1982. And it's New Gold Dream in brackets 81, 82, 83, 84. So it's it's a bit of it's the we've got Jim, Charlie, and Michael and Derek, and then the drums are done between Mike Olgatree, Mal Gainer, and Kenny Heislop. Opens up with Someone Somewhere in Summertime, one of the classic tracks from Simple Minds. I love this track I love the bass and the drums it's Mel Gaynor on the drums on this one Colours Fly and Catherine Wheel one of Derek Forbes finest bass lines just love it and then drumming on this is done by Mark Olgatree and he does a good job on this next track Promised You a Miracle I think this is the first track I ever heard by Simple Minds and I quite liked it and it reminded me of another track at the time Remember the band Classics Nouveau and Is It a, Dr it is, is it a Dream? Um, good track. Big Sleep. Love this. It's a classic song. I uh, love the keyboards and drums on this. The drummer on this one is Mel. Uh, it's pretty good. Then we get Somebody Up There Likes You. It's an instrumental. It's an okay instrumental, but I think they should have done some lyrics for this. It would have made it a better track. 
there's little bits of this that are a little bit lost. Then we get New Gold Dream. I don't mind this track at all. It's just it's a good sounding track from Simple Minds. Then we got my favourite track on here, the is Glittering Prize. One of my favourite bass lines from Derek again. Classic track from the band. Hunter and the Hunted. Like this track, love the bass line again from Derek. Some great bass work here on this album from Derek. And then we get King is White and in the crowd an interesting track lots of atmosphere and percussion really good i do like this track i like the chunky guitar on this i think this is the album that really put simple minds on the map and it was the start of that very successful period it's got some great tracks on here some classics and i like this album a lot so i'm going to give it an rto ranking of 8.6 okay my top two i love these albums the same but I think the way I've done it is because my favourite album has got a lot of classics that are stable part of their set and people do love so coming in at number two we go to the sixth album from 1984 and it's Sparkle in the Rain it's the classic lineup of Jim, Charlie, Derek, Mel and Mick and we've got additional vocals here by the one and only Miss M Kirsty McCall First track on here is Up on the Catwalk. Great track. I love Mel's drumming on this. Very catchy book. Good track. Brilliant. Book of brilliant things. One of the deep cut tracks. Uh, I love mixed keyboards on this. Uh, absolutely brilliant. Then we get Speed Your Love to Me. This is the track featuring Kirsty McCall. And this little cameo she does, and it's brilliant. Then we get my favourite track on this. It's one of my favourite tracks of all time, Waterfront. And I love Derek's bass line on this. One of his, it is his best. And the trumming from Mel's great on it. I love Charlie's guitar work on this as well. Superb track. East uh, Easter. I love the guitar effects on this. It's got a plucky guitar from Charlie. Then we get Street Hassle written by Lou Reed. I love this. Uh, great vocal again from Kirsty helping out Jim. White Hot Day. Again, one of these dark, these deep cut tracks that no one really knows unless you've got the album. Some great drumming on this. Brilliant stuff. Come On Cry Like a Baby. Great intro from Charlie. And then we get a classic bass line from Mr. Forbes. The kick inside me, solid track. The interplay here between Derek and Mel is brilliant, rings this track to life. Then we get an instrumental to end the track, the album, Shake Off the Ghosts. Love this. Again, it's it's basically Charlie, Mel and Derek having a bit of fun. It's really good. Put a bit of Mick keyboard in there and you've got a bit of a jam. Great tracks on this album, top to bottom. Classics, of course. Some good deep tracks. So I'm going to give this an RTO ranking of 8.8. .8. So, my number one. It's not really a surprise, really. It's the seventh album from 1985. And it is Once Upon a Time. Classic lineup with a change in bass. And this is where John Giblin came in. So it's Jim, Charlie, Michael and Mel. First track is the title track Once Upon a Time. I love Mel's drumming in this. It's just a solid track to open the album. Then we get the brilliant All The Things She Said. Classic track. Uh, the guitar works great. Nice bass line here from John. And Jim's vocal as ever. Brilliant. Then we get one of my favourite tracks Ghost Dancing. Love the start to this. That real crisp guitar work from, from Charlie in comes Mick great keyboard runs followed by a great vocal from from Jim this sounds much better live it's a good track on the studio but the definitive version is the live version Alive and Kicking my second favourite track on here I love the harmonies and how it's uh, built up the drumming of the male is great on that Straight into another favourite of mine, O Jungle Land. 
this has got all these tracks were staple tracks from the live set at the time. Uh, great bass line from John, guitar work from Charlie is great, and a solid vocal from Jim on this one. Let me get I Wish You Were Here. Um, it's a little bit different, but it's still a good track. Um, my least favourite on the album, but it doesn't make it a bad track. Um, pretty good. Sanctify Yourself, another big hit from the band. Some great keyboards from Mick on that. Good stuff. And the last track is Come A Long Way. This is another of them deep cut tracks. It's got such a catchy tune. And this is what made Simple Minds pretty good for the, at the time. Okay, this is an album just full of absolute classics. I think this is when Simple Minds were at the peak of their popularity. And they just couldn't do anything wrong. It's got some fantastic tracks on it this album and that's why it's my number one and I'm going to give this an RTO ranking of 9 out of 10 well there we go Simple Minds you know, in a nutshell um, I'll put at the end of this in the uh, you know when at the end you see the little box go and watch something I'll put in the that single thing I did with Richard of our favourite Simple Minds songs just and a little bit more Simple Minds for you today. Um, and that's all for today because to obviously these are long and it takes a long time for this to render and all that good stuff. But we'll be back tomorrow. We've got a good battle of the debuts tomorrow. So but it's all wrapped wrap round Barkley James Harvest and when they did the split when we had John Lees and Les Allroy's perform their own versions. One taking Mel Pritchard and the other taking Woolly. So we're going to look at that. And tomorrow's album artwork is one of my favourite bands, ELO. And then it's live stream at 8pm British Summertime. And it's the last one at British Summertime because at the weekend we put the clocks back. So we'll be back on GMT the following week. So if you watch this outside the UK, you're going to have to tune in an hour earlier than you did during the summer. Very complicated. I don't know why we do it now. No need for it. So, that's all for today, folks. Have a great day, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye for now.